Hey guys, Matt from Mystery History here. So today I wanted to share with you a confession. A confession by this man. His name is Dr. Allah Shaheen, and he is one of the world's leading Egyptologists. He is also head of the Cairo University Archaeology Department. He rubs shoulders with top Egyptian government figures and members of the Egyptian state of antiquities. If anyone knows about Egypt's most inner kept secrets, it's this guy. In December 2010, he was hosting a conference to a select group of delegates about ancient Egyptian architecture when he let something slip. He admitted to being complicit in the covering up of an astonishing secret. He has since retracted the statement and is now denying he ever made it, however, during the conference a handful of press reporters were present. They all ran the same story, shortly after the conference all quoting the same remark making it rather difficult to believe that he didn't actually say it. In what I can only imagine was a misjudgment of trust, when questioned regarding the possibility of alien involvement in the construction of ancient Egypt, he not only confirmed this to be the case, but confessed to knowing, and I quote, there's still something inside the pyramid that is not of this world. In a previous video, I shared how the tomb of Osiris, once believed to have been a mythical god from Egyptian legend, a belief Egyptian antiquities would like to keep alive, was actually discovered recently. The tomb was found by traversing an access tunnel system just a few inches in diameter. From the moment this impossible access passage was discovered, they quietly knew they had found something amazing. The moment Egyptian authorities finally managed to get a robot with a camera into the tomb, a complete media blackout descended upon Egypt. Walls were constructed around the tomb and no information regarding the find was shared for several weeks. When the world was eventually allowed near the site, the tomb was found to have been conveniently empty. No explanation as to how grave robbers could have possibly got into the tomb has ever been produced. Was Osiris an alien? Was our previous research bang on the money? Even in Egyptian legend, the figure known as Thoth was said to have allowed beings such as Ra and Osiris to exist in our realm. Were ancient Egyptian artists accurate in their depictions of these beings as hybrids? If, as Dr. Allah Shahid states, along with ancient Egyptian literature, that there is indeed something otherworldly under the Great Pyramid, could it really be a portal? And if it is, why hide it? Regardless of what it is, they are definitely hiding something. What otherworldly thing do you think is hidden under the Great Pyramid? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, take care. Most people have never heard of pareidolia, but nearly everyone has experienced it. Anyone who has looked at the moon and spotted two eyes, a nose, and a mouth has felt the pull of pareidolia. It's the imagined perception of a pattern or meaning where it does not actually exist, according to the World English Dictionary. It's picking a face out of a knotted tree trunk or finding zoo animals in the clouds. German design studio Onformative is undertaking perhaps the world's largest and most systematic search for pareidolia. Their Google Faces program will spend the next few months sniffing out face-like shapes in Google Maps. This phenomena of seeing faces was also attributed to the very famous face of Cydonia that was found on Mars. The face was first imaged in detail by the Viking 1 and Viking 2 orbiters. 18 images were taken by the orbiters. Viking 1 launched on July 20, 1976, and Viking 2 orbited Mars on July 25, 1978. The striking likeness the apparent natural formation had to a face allowed the image to quickly gain notoriety around the world. The possibility of ancient ruins being on Mars is not a hypothesis held by modern science. And it is certainly not a scenario that NASA endorses. Neither does any other space-going nation appear to have any interest in investigating the possibility. Many conspiracies have surfaced over the years regarding covert operations, in search of exactly such ruins on our neighboring planets. Many claiming black operations have occurred, such as an Apollo 20 program, with some rather convincing CGI hoaxes subsequently being created. Regardless, what a number of authentic researchers have managed to accomplish by just studying imagery of Mars and also of historical knowledge of the region held here on Earth is quite remarkable. Subsequent orbital imagery of the Cydonia region of Mars have attempted to debunk the face as just being a product of light angle. However, thankfully, people did not let these debunking efforts dissuade them from further investigations of the area. 
Some researchers who were versed in the works of Zachariah Sitchin connected the location to the possible burial site a king. Recorded within the 10th Sumerian tablet, Sitchin had apparently translated a passage regarding a god known as Alalu, who requested upon death to be buried where he would be able to peer into space gazing upon earth forever. Although many claim Sitchin's vague understanding of the writings may have led to mistranslations, Sitchin became convinced that this 10th tablet also laid claim to the king being the constructor of the pyramids. People who knew these fragments of information actually connected a network of apparent extremely ancient pyramidal ruins resting very near to the face. These remnants of once great structures undoubtedly align with the star constellation of Pleiades. What is astonishing is that these ruins would not have been discovered without Sitchin's translations. Was Sitchin right all along? Is this really proof of ancient ruins on our nearest neighbor? The alignments are certainly compelling and must be more than just coincidence. As always, thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care. In 1910, construction workers in Mexico were building an insane asylum atop of what they presumed was an ordinary mountain. Upon digging into the earth, they almost immediately discovered the ruins of an extremely ancient structure. It was later realized, yet not largely shared with the world, that the hill is actually what is now classified as the largest pyramid on earth. Hiding under the grass, trees and many tons of earth sits the once lost and now found Great Pyramid of Cholula. With a base four times the size of the Great Pyramid of Giza, just how did this amazing monument get lost to time? Also, why is it more heard regarding this enormous structure within modern academia? It sits just outside Puebla, the fourth largest city in modern-day Mexico. It is 450 meters wide and 66 meters tall, with a floor area comparable in size to nine Olympic-sized swimming pools. Not only is this structure the largest pyramid on Earth, but it is also officially and undeniably deemed the largest monument ever built on our planet. In 1519, Hernán Cortés, a Spanish invader, had his men march into the great Aztec city of Cholulu. They subsequently massacred 10% of the population and built a tiny church on top of the hill as a symbol of their conquest. The church they built is now known as the oldest continuously occupied building in North America. Historical records suggest that when Cortés arrived in Cholula, the pyramid was many thousands of years old and already entirely overgrown by vegetation. Additional legends state that the Great Pyramid was so sacred to the Cholula people that they covered it with soil in order to hide it from Cortez's army. We may never know how it became buried under the sediment it now rests beneath. Experts believe the pyramid grew in stages, successive civilizations improving on what had already been built. When an old pathway was removed in 2013 to make access for a drainage system, workers reportedly uncovered at least 63 complete and very ancient skeletons. Some of these remains accompanied by numerous alien-looking skulls absent their skeletons. Ancient myths from the region told of giants building the structure, with the city's inhabitants being of normal size. From the 1930s until today, great efforts had been made to fully excavate the pyramid. Although these excavations rarely gain any media attention, regardless of the pyramid's enormous size and possible importance, over five miles of tunnels have been dug inside the structure, all open to the public if you can get in them, as locals have reportedly reclaimed the pyramid as their own. Even though extensive exploratory research has been undertaken, the age or indeed the possible builders remain an elusive mystery. Just what type of tombs could still be buried beneath the largest officially classified pyramid on Earth? Were alien remains really found amongst the ruins? And if they were, why was the world kept in the dark regarding the results of this testing? Official reports released at a much later date concluded that they were the decapitated skulls of deformed children. This conclusion, however, just raises more questions. We will keep you posted on further information discovered regarding the site. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Less 1 and 2, the Lincoln Experimental Satellite 1 and 2, were essentially identical experimental communication satellites. Less 1, launched from Cape Canaveral on 11th February 1965, it accomplished only a few of its objectives. Apparently because of the miswiring of the ordnance circuitry, the satellite never left circular orbit and ceased transmitting in 1967. Less 2, the twin of Less 1 fared much better. 
it achieved its planned final orbit on 6 May 1965. However, less one the American satellite, abandoned in 1967 as a piece of space junk, has mysteriously began transmitting signals. An amateur radio astronomer in North Cornwall accidentally picked up the signal and, after cross checking with various lists, has identified it as less one built by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and launched in 1965 and has been drifting out of control ever since. Phil Williams from Nearview noticed its peculiar signal and suspects it's caused by a tumbling end over end. He believes every four seconds the solar panels become shadowed by the engine. It gives off a signal, a particularly ghostly sound as the voltage from the solar panels fluctuates, Phil says. It is likely that the onboard batteries have now disintegrated and something has caused the transmitter on 237 MHz, believed for decades to have been dead and lost to the vast emptiness of space, to mysteriously start up again. Phil says it's remarkable to think that electronics built nearly 50 years ago, 12 years before Voyager 1, and long before microprocessors and integrated circuits, is still capable of working in the hostile environs of space. What do you think of the less's mysterious signal? Has it been hijacked by aliens attempting to make contact? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Who built the Great Pyramids? How? Why? Questions many have attempted but seemingly failed to answer. Although claimed as tombs, with the different internal chambers within the largest, Khufu, named in representation of this purpose. Interestingly, Khufu, or Cheops, is the only one of the three pyramids with internal chambers. The other smaller two merely have tunnels beneath. An enigmatic box, whose lid has long been lost to history, lay within this enormous structure, long claimed to have been the sarcophagus of Khufu. However, although suspiciously small, no one seems to be able to explain how they got it into the chamber in the first place. It is as if the pyramid was built around, as it doesn't fit through any of the known entranceways. Since the 19th century, when these chambers were first rediscovered, a tremendous amount of research, though it must be noted, always supervised by official Egyptian antiquity academics, nonetheless, remarkable discoveries have at least been partially shared with the world. Most notably, Gantenbrink's door. Yet the tomb of Osiris, where this once inaccessible tunnel led, was, once the media was permitted back into the location, found empty, claimed by officials as being found conveniently vacant. A room only discovered thanks to 21st century technology, according to mainstream Egyptologists, was somehow looted. However, there still lay many mysteries within this most intriguing of structures, and we would expect at least one or possibly many more, which no matter how long it takes us to rediscover them, will be too big to hide. For example, Although we once thought the tomb Gantenbrink discovered was inaccessible, the chamber at the top of the structure, one of considerable size, estimated at 30 square meters, is so inaccessible. It was only found with technology used to register cosmic rays. a technology usually utilized in high-energy particle physics, capable of tracking particles called muons, produced when cosmic rays strike atoms in the upper atmosphere. These incredibly sensitive detectors were first developed for use in particle accelerators, but they have also been used to gaze into the inner bowels of many geological and ancient artificial features. In December 2015, Physicist Kunihiro Morishima of Nagoya University, Japan, placed detectors inside the Queen's chamber, 
to detect muons passing through the pyramid, thus any large chamber still hidden within the pyramid would be detected due to a higher register of muons than expected from denser angles. The chamber's discovery was corroborated by two other teams of physicists. All three teams observed a large void in the same location above the Grand Gallery. It was a big surprise, says Tayubi. We're really excited, he continued. The researchers say it might even be made up of two or more smaller spaces. Tayubi suggests that it could be, quote, a second Grand Gallery. It is a discovery which we are finding highly compelling.